So your ideas um, in your head will be perfect. They will be the, the next big thing. And that's great. You need to have that sort of confidence in your ideas. Um, but what you do need to understand as well, although that's perfect for yourself, not everyone is going to see it. They're not going to see it in the same way as you. So you've got to actually get into the head of your target customers. And that's something that's really important. And it's a big mistake that a lot of people make. When they launch a business, they launch that business without doing the proper research, without talking to their target customers at that initial stage. And so yes, that idea in their head is all shiny and bright and perfect. Um, they launch it and then those sales don't come. And it's partly because you've not done that, that proper research. So research is just about asking questions. Um, asking about what you offer, very important to ask if people do want it, you cannot assume that people are going to want what you're offering. Um, how will you sell it? So again, this is a big mistake that a lot of people make. They kind of have their ideas, they don't think about how they're going to market it. If you don't market things, people are not going to find out about them. If you don't market things in the right way. Um, you've got to ask this question of yourself, do you need help? Everyone needs help. You cannot do something on your own. Um, setting up a business is really, really difficult. So you do need to get some help, whether that's from such as ourselves in the enterprise team, or the support that you will find in every town and city in the UK. Um, sort of national support that you'll find. So there is a lot of support out there, you've got to find it. But that also could come from people that you need help from, such as graphic designers to help you with logos, such as accountants and services, um, such as solicitors. You're going to need professional services at some point as well. So you are going to need help from people, so don't try and do everything on your own. And then, also, a really important question, is your idea going to make money? Now your motivation for money is going to be different. So some of you will just want to make enough to live off. Um, some of you will want to get rich. So whatever your motivation in terms of money um, around your business is, is concerned, you've got to understand how your business is going to make money. Because what you can't afford to do is for your business to lose money. So nobody can do that. Nobody can sustain that. You might be able to sustain it for a little bit if you've got your own savings, but ultimately every idea has to make money, it has to be profitable, otherwise it, it's, it's going to uh, fall by the wayside quite quickly. So those are sort of questions that you've got to ask. Um, I'm sure you're all here because you do love the thought of running your own business, but what are your fears? What, what concerns you? about running your own business. So a couple of you that have kind of got experience of working for yourself already, what have you found difficult? Uh, you put the importance of business over your own welfare factor, that's a good one. Yeah. You need it to survive, otherwise, mm -hmm. I don't know, you basically have a job. So you'll, you'll put hours in and you'll put hours in and then you'll be eight hours in and a week and you'll be like, oh my God. But then it does survive, so it's fine. But it, it's, yeah, I mean that's that's a really good point. I mean, you, I, I did mention it earlier that you running a business is hard. You have to put a lot of hours in, certainly to start with to get things up and running. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a good thing to sort of acknowledge that that's something that you're going to have to kind of um, face. Uh, any other fears? Anything else that anyone to, uh, to gain a customers to target the market and to, to find the right people to, yep. to, to sell. So how do you think, and you can answer this, or anyone else can answer this, how do you think you will find the right customers for your businesses? I think that's a bit of a tricky question, but it takes, it takes, uh, a bit of uh, understanding of the dynamics 
and uh, an entrepreneur should get it right from the onset because the market is large you have to have a niche then ask the question who do i want to serve okay let's say for example my industry audit and consulting uh who do i want to serve you see sme you see the fortune 500 and the like and uh, in the di dynamics of my industry now for example as a sole practitioner i won't want to go for the fortune 500 because on the legal side of things and on the corporate side of corporate governance side of things they will not they are not mandated to to come and portray me because they have some criteria to select who their auditor will be but and the smp 500 blah blah they are all of them put together in the dynamics of the economy of our economy maybe they contribute 20 percent to the whole economy meanwhile the the remaining 80 percent contribution is coming from the smp that employ 10 people 20 people 100 people which ordinarily i should focus so if i want to answer who should who, who will be my customer they they will be my target to reach i will not even go for the five uh, smp 500 because i know they cannot patronize me yeah i mean one of the one of the things you've got to do is, is identify who that target market is and um, i see so many business plans that are presented to me that that question is there it says who is your ideal customer and, and quite often people are quite lazy and put anyone and everyone and it's never going to be anyone and everyone it's going to be a specific age range it's going to be a specific demographic of some kind <laughs> so like you, you said with your vegan food you think Brighton's the right market because it's the kind of vegan capital of the, of the UK which is, you know, that's a good reason to kind of um, target Brighton and I think you've got to sort of establish so who you are in the target, and that's the first thing. So in terms of getting over those fears, it is about making sure that you um, can identify the target market. So there, there are going to be lots of fears that you have. Um, don't let those put you off. It's about doing the things that we're going to go through over the next few slides. Um, anyone and everyone can be an entrepreneur, so I've just said, don't answer that question, who is your target market, by saying anyone and everyone. What I will say is anyone and everyone can be an entrepreneur, can run their own business, can be successful. So all of these people here um, are successful entrepreneurs. Some of them you'll recognise, some of them you won't, because some of them are kind of well known. Um, and. Some of them you would probably not say, I would not have put them down as an entrepreneur, such as David Hockney, um, renowned artist globally, and that's what he's done all his life. He's painted, he's grown, um, he's reinvented himself. He's an entrepreneur because that's what he does, he sells his art, um, and he's made many, many millions of pounds from it. You've got people like Joe Wicks, who he was just a personal trainer in a park um, with a few clients, and then he started putting his stuff on YouTube, on Instagram, and he's now hugely successful. Um, may anyone know who this is? He's one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. You will know his company. His name is Ingvar Kamprad. Um, he's no longer with us, he, he died a couple of years ago, but he started a business called IKEA. And his purpose, his aim from that business was to make everyday furniture easy for people to buy, affordable for people to buy. Um, so he started been entrepreneurial when he was about seven years old in the playground by selling things to his, um, the, the people he was at school with. Um, you've got people like Nadia Hussein, never went 
um, out to be an entrepreneur as such, but she went on the great baking cake. Great baking cake. She won the program, and, and since they've had best-selling books, her own TV show, etc. Uh, we've got locals here, so um, we've got Chu graduate here. Um, these are running shops in Sheffield, so we've got people who are just doing things that they are passionate about, um, they've got an interest in, and they've just had that desire to kind of go out and make their businesses successful, and that's what they've done. So you can all be an entrepreneur, you can all set up your own business, it's about having skills <coughs> in the things that you um, are looking to, to kind of sell, uh, products or services, it's about um, making sure that you do the research to make sure your idea is going to work for you and the people that you're aiming at. Um, okay, some of the other things that I would say are really important for you to become successful. You've got to work hard, I've already heard this, you know, it is hard work. Um, and because of that, you will need to put the effort in. You're going to have to be focused, have this determination. Um, why is it important to be innovative when you are working for yourself? Something like the work, you can't just keep planning on working hard to know that you're working for to be like, oh well, if this is the work, then you just try something else for the work. Yeah, you've got to be adaptable to change, you've got to be adaptable to mm -hmm. change trends that happen. Um, you, know, you, you can't just keep selling the same thing that might be successful at the start because in two years time it might not be popular anymore so that could apply to food it could apply to lingerie so you know products or services do come in and out of fashion so you've got to be innovative in terms of looking at your idea constantly asking those same questions that you started asking at the start to see if your idea is still current and relevant if you stand still with an idea that might have been successful at an early stage, at some stage you will get overtaken by competitors. So, yeah, all of these traits are important when you're working with yourself. Um, and, yeah, some of them you will have, some of them you will have to kind of try and sort of um, upskill. But you can do that. These are some of the people that we've helped um, through the enterprise team here and have gone on to be successful with their businesses. All sorts of businesses, again, videographers, online food, um, sports coaching business, photography. So lots of different businesses. Their clothing, stroke accessories business. So all of these people came with ideas that they had knowledge of, experience in, or they were just passionate about these particular ideas and they've gone on to be successful. So focusing on what you're good at is quite important. Okay, um, sorry, there's a lot of text on here. But by the way, I will be sending you the slides afterwards, so don't feel you have to kind of write things down. And I will send you the slides around afterwards. So just make sure your name's on that sheet so I know you've attended and I can send the slides to you. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do that will kind of go wrong. So you've got to be very, very careful with things that... Um, can we have a cut-off, Darren? Can we have a cut-off for you? Please? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll cut off now. Um, so, yeah, avoid pitfalls, things that could go wrong. Um, a lot of those you will avoid by having a look at the business plan. Um, it's really important that you do your research, you have a look at a business plan um, and see how your idea is going to fit and work for you but also fit with um, the target market you're going for. Some basics on here, if you have an idea that you can't explain to people, so for those of you that were here at the start, I got you to introduce yourselves and, and very briefly introduce your idea, it's really important that you do that very briefly um, because people need to understand quite quickly what your idea is about. This is 
quite important. Um, having an idea that doesn't stand out enough. So you mentioned about having a niche product. That is quite important. You have to have something that's got a unique selling point, has to stand out from your competitors. But also, you've got to be very careful. The reason I've got a star next to that is don't try and make it stand out too much. So competition is always a good thing. You need to look at your competitors. You need to understand who else is out there and sort of see how you fit alongside your competitors. Um, but you need to sort of also make sure that you can stand out in comparison to them, but not too much. As in, um, don't try and have an idea that's too unique, too niche, because quite often your market is going to be too small. Okay. These areas here, number six, not doing enough research, and then not having an idea that anyone wants, and um, not understanding the target market. So again, we've already spoken about a lot of that already. Um, research is important. You never stop doing it. So sometimes I ask people, I'm not going to do it today, but sometimes I will ask a group like this, how many of you have done all your research for your ideas? Quite often I get lots of hands. Um, you have never ever stopped doing your research. And the moment you do stop doing your research into a, a business idea, so you could have been trading 10 years and you could be making lots of money and really successful, but if you're not doing your research, again, you're going to get left behind. You're going to stand still. So never stop doing your research. It's not exciting, but it's, it's pretty important. You've got to stay on top of that. How many of you have struggled with research? Anyone kind of struggled no, of knowing where to do their research? Yeah. So anything in particular that you can kind of think of? That so knowing where to start fully to look at your target market in detail, not just in general, like yeah. a big overview of it, but to know fully how to target. I know okay. that like questionnaires are a good start, I thought, to try to create one, but it's even without, it's where to start. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, where to start is to look at your competitors. So in, in your case, if you're looking at bat balls, that would be the, the place to start. Um, have a look at other companies that are doing bat balls. Whether they're big chains like Lush, or whether it's locals doing farmers markets, etc. Um, have a look at other people that are doing them. So that's your starting point, and that will help you kind of understand the sort of people that are buying those products. You can kind of come pay yourself to a particular brand, a particular company that's already established. You can look at the type of people that they're appealing to. You can look at the way they're marketing themselves. Um, so that would always be a starting point for all of you to look at your competition. Um, and that will help you on so many levels. Yeah, doing surveys, getting feedback from people, really important. So how can you do that? You can use social media. So, so many people with their business idea get to a stage of, right, okay, I'm going to launch in six months' time. And that's when they start putting themselves out there on social media. That's too late. You need to be on social media six months before. So you can start getting feedback from people. You can start to sort of generate interest in the ideas that you're putting out there. So use social media to kind of get feedback. Um, there are other sort of things like um, SurveyMonkey, Google, um, Google's version, anyway, there's lots of different versions um, of survey sites that you can just send out surveys to people to get feedback, ask those questions that you need answers to. Um, so that's your starting point. Any, anywhere else where somebody struggled with research at this stage? Yeah. At a, at a certain point, you will not know uh, where to, which way to go. Say that again, sorry. We will start the research and yeah. we will go through the research and at a certain point, we will we'll, we'll be confused. Yeah, you need to start trading at some point, yeah, and that will help you, yeah. Um, so that will help you kind of get you know, feedback again from people. So you need to do that. Okay. Um, 
a lot of people are worried about when to start. And there's no right or wrong answer to this, but what you shouldn't do is start too early where you've not you've not done that planning that we spoke about, you've not done that research. Um, some of this will be dictated by the time that you have. So for those of you that are currently studying, you might be finding it hard to juggle your time between studies and setting up a business. For those of you that are working and trying to set this up on the side, again, your time is quite limited. So time can be an issue and that can dictate things. It can mean that things take longer than you would anticipate. That's fine, don't worry about that. Um, another thing, if you need a lot of money to start your business, then that can be an issue. Um, finding funds to start your business um, can obviously slow things down. Research, again, you're just doing as much as possible, you never stop in doing it. So you need to make sure you've done research before you kind of launch any idea. Otherwise it's going to end in tears. Um, and, and this research, yeah, it's going to help you understand what you're trying to solve for people, what you're trying to bring to the table that's not already there. Um, I would encourage you, if you haven't got experience in the areas that you're going into, it's a good idea to get that if you can. Um, you mustn't assume that you know things. So again, a business plan is there for a purpose and it's for, who, who do you think a business plan is for? Business or Investors, okay. Anyone else? Yeah. It, it will be for investors, um, but most importantly, that business plan is for you. So it's, it's your tool, it's your map of how you're going to get from where you are now with an idea to where you want to be in the future. And you should be using it and updating it. It's a, it's a, a live document. So again, having a business plan at the start is important having a business plan in five years time, 10 years time, will help you develop the business and grow the business. Um, and then yeah, later on, you, if you're looking for investment, then it's gonna be essential for that, yeah. Um, but it's gonna help you stop assuming things. It's gonna help you fill in that plan and look at it in a way that you say, actually, yes, what I thought was going to work is not going to work. So it, it kind of helps you stop assuming things. Um, definitely get help. You know, we've, we've kind of mentioned that. Um, use a business plan to help you. you. You will come across successful business owners that have started their businesses and, and grown them and developed them. And they will say, I've never had a business plan. I don't need one. You don't need one. Um, I can guarantee that they will have got there much quicker. They would have been even more successful had they had a business plan. So don't ever let anyone tell you that a business plan is not going to help you. It's going to help. And a part of it, again, it's, it's doing this research, it's asking these questions about your customers, about your competitors. I'm not going to go through all of these. You can have a look at these. Uh, I will send you a, a business plan template in the email with the slides as well. Um, the sort of questions you will find in that are these kind of questions. It also looks at, in terms of customers, who are your customers at this stage, who are your customers in the future? Are they B2B or B2C? They could be both. Now B2B is business to business. So are your customers going to be other businesses or are they business to consumer, that's just people like you and me? Um, what age? You are going to have a specific age range for your target audience. And, and that could be, let's say that's 18 to 30 year olds. That does not mean that somebody 70 years old cannot be a customer of yours. It just means that the majority of your customers are within a certain age range. And you should be targeting those people through the social media that's going to speak to those people, 
you know, publications, etc. Any other marketing is going to be dictated by these sort of questions, the answers to these questions. So, do as much as possible in terms of research on customers and your competitors to find out as much as you possibly can. If you see what marketing your competitors are doing, if they're a successful business, then that's the sort of marketing that hopefully is going to work for you as well. But you can hopefully do it better. Because that's what you're aiming for. Um, other things that you're going to need to research, if you do need funding to start your idea, you need to know where that's going to come from. Do any of you know that you need money to start your ideas? Yeah, all right. Do you know where it's going to come from? No? There's not lots of funding. Uh, I mean, it, it depends on what you need. But funding, if you've got an idea and you need £10,000 to start your idea, um, if you can use your own savings or you can borrow from family or friends, that is always the best option. Um, your alternatives for a figure like £10,000 would be to go to a bank and they will say, yeah, okay, we can look at lending you £10,000. Um, there will be no guarantees with that. Or you could look at, there is a government scheme called Startup Loan Fund, um, which you can apply for. It's, it's like a bank loan. Again, you do have to pay interest on it. It's not free. Um, but it's it's a way of funding a business idea. Other than that, you haven't really got any other options. So you are looking at using your own money, borrowing from family and friends, or borrowing from a bank, or a scheme like Start of Loan. Um, so funding is something you do need to research. If you've got huge startup costs um, from the very start, you need to establish where that money is going to come from quite quickly. Otherwise, you're wasting your time um, doing all the work on the idea. Um, how are you going to market it? It doesn't happen on its own. So, you know, I've worked with a lot of people that have got great ideas, but they're rubbish at marketing and their ideas sadly fail. Um, so getting marketing right is essential. Having this unique selling point. So we've said about the niche and um, what makes you different from your competitors, having a unique selling point. Know what it is. Because sometimes you can set your business up and it can be great. And one of the first questions you will get asked from a potential customer will be, why should I buy from you? And so many people can't answer that. Because they're all, I don't know, just buy from me. But you, you, if you can answer that question with, you buy from me because we're different to competitors because, then you've got a unique selling point. And that ultimately helps somebody buy from you. And some businesses more than others will need to, to kind of address legal requirements. One of the things you all have to address is you have to register as a business. Um, I'm not going to go into that in a lot of detail today, but what I will say at this point, do not register as a limited company without seeking advice. So many people that I speak to have said, yeah, I've registered as a limited company. You don't need to. Um, the majority of business ideas, you can, you can register as a sole trader, also known as self-employed. It's easy, there's no cost. Um, the moment you go down the limited company route, it's very regulated, you will need an accountant, and it'll cost you a lot of money. So, you have to register, that is a legal requirement, um, but don't just register as a limited company because it made down the public, so that's the thing to do. Get advice on it first. Um, other things that you would need to look at, branding and name. So choosing a name is really, really difficult. What, what's the name of your business, please? I see, I see. And how long did it take you to come up with that? Was it 
fairly easy or was it? Okay, that's good. Yeah, and that's essential. Create a list of names that you could use. Um, what do you need to check when you've kind of got a list of names? Look for a catchy name. Sorry? Look for a name which is like catchy, like everyone can get it fast. Yeah, you need to know if it's catchy and you need to know if, yeah. No one else is yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I was Absolutely, about yeah. to say. Yeah. So check domain names are available, check handles on social media are available. Um, that doesn't mean to say you can't use another name, but it's the same as someone else. Make sure it doesn't conflict um, with another company or something else that's really well established on social media or whatever else. So, um, branding, how important is branding? Um, one of the most important things, again, get a brand that kind of helps you market what you're doing. Um, so it's worth paying for that, it's worth finding a graphic designer who can help you come up with some branding for your particular idea. So don't try and do that on your own, unless you are very, very creative. I have set up a business before and one of the things that I was going to do uh, was design my own logo and brand. But then fortunately I decided actually no, let's get a professional to do this. And that was the best thing I ever did. So after a launch of business, people were contacting me and saying I love the brand. And that's why they contacted me. Had I done that brand myself, I would have not got half those customers because of the brand. It was strong and it really related to customers, people liked it. So if you've got any money available in terms of money that's available for marketing or branding, I would always say spend it on the branding. Get the brand, it shouldn't cost you too much. Marketing, there's so many things you can do for free. And trademarks, you can put a trademark on a logo, a brand, and you can do that for free. To get a registered trademark, you will have to pay for it. And um, I would always say you need to get some advice on that as well. Now we're lucky in Sheffield, we have what is called the Business and IP Centre, which is based in Sheffield Central Library um, on Surrey Street. So they will help with protecting things, including trademarks, patents, copyright, um, anything yeah, <coughs> that, that is needed. Uh, advice on protecting things, the business ID centre have specialist lawyers that will help you for that for free. Now that is one of 19 BIPCs in the country, so if you're not based in Sheffield and you're based in another town or city in the UK, have a look to see where your nearest BIPC is, because it's free advice. Um, they run a lot of events as well, the, the BIPC in Sheffield this week has got a lot of events going on to help start up businesses um, on lots of different things. So they run a lot of events, but you can book in with an IP lawyer if you have any questions around patent, trademarks, um, copyright, design rights, or what kind of thing. So use their help. Has anyone got any questions on names, branding, that have not And again, I'll put a link to the BIPC in Sheffield in the email I'll send you later. Um, there's loads of, I mean, we've spoken about support you can get um, from organisations. There's loads of books out there that you can have a look at that will really help you. There's loads of stuff on YouTube. So if you've got a particular question about doing a piece of research or anything um, to do with starting up, um, have a look and you will find books, you will find YouTube videos, etc. You will find support from such as ourselves and other organisations as well. 
co-working spaces like we have here at the ILAB are ideal for you meeting other people. Again, just identifying what you do need that help with, um, and then kind of speaking to people really, and, and sort of looking for that support. Okay, one of the other things, we mentioned about getting a name right, how difficult that can be. Um, one of the other things that's really tricky to get right is pricing. So what do you charge for your products, your services? Um, for some of you it's really easy. So I guess with a pizza, it's quite easy because you, you kind of compare yourself to the competitions out there and there is kind of going rate of what you would pay for a particular type of pizza. So you're going to pay more for um, a wood-fired pizza than you would for a standard pizza, as it were. You're going to pay more for different ingredients. So pricing can sometimes be dictated by who your competition is. And you should always compare yourself to the competition in terms of looking at the price. Um, but also, in the case of a pizza, again, if we use that as an example, it's going to be dictated by the ingredients you use. If you're using the finest ingredients, you need to shout about that. You need to say, we are using these ingredients as opposed to cheaper ingredients. That's a selling point, but also people will expect to pay more for that because it's using quality. So um, getting pricing right is not easy. What you must avoid mistake that people make too often when they start something is they charge too little. If your prices are cheap, people think your products and your service are not very good, they think they're cheap and nasty. So you can actually put people off by being too cheap. And it happens, happens all the time. I've had a lot of people that have kind of been scared to, to charge the going rate in their industry. And so they launch their business and Six months down the line, they say, yeah, I'm not getting any customers. I'm doing lots of marketing, I've done all this research, I'm not getting customers. When I talk to them about pricing, they're considerably lower than their competitors. And they say, yeah, I've even charged a low rate to entice people to use me. They're not enticing people, what they're doing is putting people off. Because people are looking at that price and thinking, that must be rubbish. None of us, want to pay the lowest price. We always want to pay what we can afford. So it's not always necessarily the highest price, but we want to, to get the best we can possibly get. And so quite often if you see free products in the supermarket, you quite often go for the middle one. You don't always go for the cheapest because you think it's not going to be very nice. You don't always go for the most expensive because you can't afford it. So you go for a middle ground. And that is going to be the same with your products and services. So charge what other people are charging, even at the start. If you want to entice people to use you, to try you, put an offer on. Say, this is my price, but if you're a new customer, you'll get 10% off or you'll get 20% off. That works. Because they see the value attached to that higher price, they don't associate you with being cheap and nasty. And they, but then they're enticed by an offer. So when you see, if you're a new customer, you get a 10% discount, 20% discount. That's why they're doing it. Okay, any other comments on pricing? Anything else that anyone's experienced or got any worries about in terms of pricing? So pricing is important, marketing is important. Um, we've already mentioned how important it is. It's, it's, it can be a reason why a great idea doesn't succeed if you get marketing wrong. So if you feel this is an area that you haven't got the right skills in, then it's worth getting a marketing agency to help you. And again, what you pay them hopefully will um, result in success for you. But there are so many things, again, just by looking at your competitors and seeing what they're doing will help you um, 
stand out from your competitors and sort of do things that are working for them. So make sure you do a lot of research into marketing. It, it's, it's really important to get it right. Um, it will take a lot of effort, but you've got to you've got to make sure that you're doing everything possible to get your name out there, to get your brand name. Any any questions on marketing? Yeah. Uh, one in the previous day, uh, let's just say uh, we are developing a product okay. and we are not able to sell it at the uh, price which the competitor is selling because he's been in the industry for a long time, done a lot of lean and other stuff to reduce the price. We are just starting and we don't have the connections. At that point of time, how are we going to sell the product? Yeah, I mean quite often that is common that you haven't got the supply chain to make your products as cheap as something that's out there. Um, so that is a tricky one. I mean, sometimes you have to kind of, you have to try and match their prices to a certain degree, and that will mean that your margins are tiny or you could be losing money. Now, you can only afford to do that for a certain amount of time. But to get established and test, you know, your product against others, sometimes you have to just have that squeeze. So it happens a lot. I mean, if you, anyone that watches Dragon's Den, and see someone going in with a food product, for instance, like last week there was somebody who was trying to sell dried mushroom crisps. Now the profit margins on those, because their supply chain was small, they were having to order in small quantities at the start. It's tiny. So if they were selling to a supermarket like Tesco's or Sainsbury's, they're not going to make any money on it. So they might have to sort of run a, a slight loss to start with. And, and that will be the case, you know, with possibly what you're doing. If you're trying to sort of compete with a big player that's got this huge supply chain, and um, they are going to be able to do things cheaper. So again, yeah, it's just weighing up how you can fit and how long you can sustain buying smaller quantities for. All right. Okay. Um, be really patient. You know, your ideas are not going to be a success straight away. It's very rare that happens. So, um, don't ever jump in to your ideas without looking at the market, who the customer is, and how are you going to make this successful for you. So again, this business planning, this research is going to be essential for your ideas to work. But it takes time, um, quite often a lot longer than you would hope. So, you know, when I speak to somebody about an initial idea they've got, quite often they say, yeah, I want to launch in a month's time, two months' time. It's very rare that happens, unfortunately. It takes longer. So uh, be patient and don't rush things. It's worth getting things right. Um, putting you out of a job. There are tools that will help you in terms of managing accounts, um, organizing yourself. So things that will help you manage accounts, such as Xero. Um, there are other things that are out there like Sage, QuickBooks, etc. You can get apps on your phone. There are organizers like Monday, Trello, that I'm sure some of you might have used already, project management tools use these, especially if you feel you're quite disorganized. Because working for yourself, you have to be very organized. You have to know what is happening and when it's happening. You have to know when you have to do things, when you have to implement things. So get yourself organized. Um, whatever way works for you, but if these kind of tools help you, then yeah, use them. What I would say as well is Again, this comes back to that initial question of do you need help? If there are, um, if there's help that you need from such an accountant, then yeah, get it. Don't try and do things that you are not comfortable with. Sorry about the noise, I think it's on the roof. I don't know what to do. Um, okay. We said about being patient. Um, every idea is going to kind of develop at a different pace. 
So again, don't like that. Worry you. Don't compare. I mean, I, I've been saying all along about comparing yourself to the competition. You must do that. But don't compare yourself to the competition in terms of thinking you're going to be as good as them in a very, very quick space of time. So aspire to be like others, <coughs> but don't expect to have their, their success straight away. What is going to help you? Um, a business plan will help you, or a business model canvas. So we do another session uh, called an introduction to the business model canvas. Any of you use a business model canvas? Yeah, anyone else? So it's a different way of looking at an idea. It does what a business plan does in an easier to understand way. Um, it's still asking very in-depth questions and it still requires you to do research. And all the things that we've spoken about still expect you to look at how it's going to make money. But it, for a lot of people, it can be a much easier way to do things. So if that um, appeals to you, then, then by all means, come along to the upcoming workshops we've got on the business model canvas. And then, yes, you've got your traditional business plan. Um, a business model canvas is a good starting point for a business plan as well, because a lot of people struggle writing business plans. They're not, they're not the easiest stuff in the world to go. They are, as we said, really important. Um, I showed you earlier some people that we've helped in the past, these are some others. So we've got chocolate makers, we've got DJs, um, we've got uh, clothing businesses, we've got products, shops. So again, all of these people have gone with ideas that they've had and they've developed them into successful businesses and um, you have to have confidence in yourself to do this so again working for yourself you're kind of the face of the business you're going to have to put yourself out there and believe in the products and services that you, you're trying to put out there so make sure that you do have that belief okay one other key thing that we've not mentioned or, uh, so far is networking. So <coughs> you need to sort of make sure that you are well networked with suppliers, with people that have been there and done it, um, with people that could be potential customers. So you've got to make sure that you're putting yourself out there and, and sort of spreading your sort of contacts and making contacts every way you can that are going to be relevant to your particular idea. Um, it will help with self-promotion for the brand that you're trying to create. You can do it through co-working spaces, you can do it through networking events like you see on the screen here which happen on a regular basis for different sectors. So have a look. Um, one of the ones that happens on a regular basis if your business was in, interested in sustainability then you know you could join such a Sheffield sustainability network and um, co-working spaces was said about Hello My Lab there's places like Cads, Union Street as well becoming a member of such as Sheffield Chamber of Commerce can be really really beneficial for you as well so make sure you're putting yourself out there you're making connections with people um, because it is going to help. It's going to help you assess your idea in different ways. It's going to help you kind of um, meet the right people that can open doors for you. And yeah, further down the line, if you need an investment, then again, you're going to be looking at networking in the right circles to meet investors. So, um, other networking that is going to be important, family, friends, supporting you with your ideas. Yeah, that's important. Um, finding those with the skills that you need. So again, we've mentioned such as accountants, um, business and IP centre that could help you with protecting things, suppliers. So you know, in the case of food businesses, for instance, you're going to need suppliers. Um, why is it important to network with your competitors? 
to know what they are doing and to like uh, coexist with them. Yeah. Go exist. Know what they're doing. Um, collaborate. Um, and differentiate as well. Yeah. And to know what they're doing, to not do the same thing exactly otherwise. Yeah. Don't view your competitors as the enemy. You know, they are going to be people that you can get on with, they're going to be people that you can learn from, they're going to be people that um, will help you. Um, for some of you, depending on what you're doing, they could be people that you collaborate with on, you know, you could be very small as a business at the start. Um, you get asked to do a piece of work that's way too big for you on your own. <coughs> so you collaborate with a competitor to deliver that project, to deliver that service. Um, so don't view your competitors as the enemy. View them as, as people that you can collaborate with and work with. Um, yeah, it's just important to see them in that way, to learn from them, to, to get on with them. You also end up employing a lot of people that use the work at your Headers and goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just kind of networking in your circle, um, you know, using experience, using sort of past contacts. Again, it's really going to help your ideas succeed. Any questions about networking? Anything that anyone's concerned about? Not sure about. Yeah. How to network with our investors? How to find our investors? Um, you, you, you need to get going first. So, so many people say, I want investors from the idea stage. You're not really going to find those investors at the start. You need to be established. And then again, it is about making sure you're going to networking events. So again, it depends on your idea. It depends on what investment you need. But it's... it's very rare somebody wants investment at the start because you, you can't afford to give away um, a piece of your business at the start. So you, you've got to make sure it's the right time and hopefully is further down the line you will establish when you need that investment. Um, but quite often it's not at the start, you don't need that investment. So it's going to be through natural in, um, networks that you kind of make over time that you will come into contact at the with people that have got experience of running similar sort of ventures and then they've got money to invest in new ventures. Um, but obviously seeking investment is always going to come at cost. So it's not something that most of you will need or require at the very start. Um, so it's a good idea to do that. Though. It's a good idea to seek for investment. Um, you need to go down the line. Further down the line, generally, yeah. yeah. I mean, again, it depends on what you're doing and what you need it for. Um, you know, again, for those of you that watch Dragon's Den, those that go in seeking investment on there, um, they're seeking the expertise of the dragons rather than the money. Well, that's the way they should be doing it. Quite often, they focus the people that are pitching. Quite often, focus on the money rather than the expertise and contacts that those people have got. So. Seeking money for your business idea is not always going to be a strategy that works for you. you you've got, when you seek an investment, quite often one thing that's more valuable is the expertise and experience of those people. Um, and you will see on Dragon's Den again, sorry to keep mentioning Dragon's Den, but so many people go on there too early. Their idea is not ready for investment, and that's why they fail to go out those doors with investment. So you've got to do it at the right time. Um, you've got to find the right people. You're going to find that through networking. So building your contacts. And again, there is not a list of people that you can just go to and, and get investment. And if you do find a list of people like that, they're quite often going to be the wrong people and in it for the wrong reasons that's not going to help your skill idea. Don't share the same vision well. Exactly, yeah, they do have to share that vision, yeah, yeah. They have to understand what you're doing, they have to share the vision that you've got. Yeah. Now for some of you, I mean, none of you mentioned creating an app, but I see a lot of people 
that have got app ideas and they haven't got the skills to create that app. So they've got a great idea and potentially it could be the next big thing in terms of an app. Now that kind of person that hasn't got those skills is going to need to partner with someone who's an app builder. Now in, in that case, that person that they partner with is going to be an investor. Now it's not going to be money that they invest, it's going to be their skills that they invest in that idea. So for that idea to happen, they need to go 50-50 in partnership with someone else who's going to make their idea happen. So investment comes in, in different ways. Um, not always financial, quite often it's more the skills and the contacts that they can bring. Excuse me, could you tell us something uh, about the long forms? Yeah. How it works, more details please, because it, I think it's a uh, it's good option for us instead of investment. Yeah, investment. I mean loans, it's again dependent on how much you need. Uh, if you're seeking too much, then you're going to struggle to get it. Um, banks quite often, in the current climate, will say, let's say you went to them and said, I want £20,000 to start this business, quite often they will say, well, we'll give you half. You need to find the other half. They will, they will do what's called match funding. So they won't give you all the money because that's too risky for them. So I think if you are looking at loans, any of you, you have to be aware that they, whoever that loan company is, if it's a bank or a government loan, quite often they will want to know how much you're putting in yourself. And if you're not putting anything in, they're not going to give you any money. It's too risky. Um, so they will expect you to put in some money. Um, so just, yeah, be aware. But yeah, it depends on how much you, you, you wanted to borrow. Um, be really wary of any sort of um, loan companies that are not, that are just, you know, high interest rates, etc. because the likelihood is you're not going to be able to afford to pay that interest back. So there are obviously dodgy loan companies out there, be careful. So always start with your banks. They will be quite a high rate of interest and they will want to sort of do what they call match funding. Um, in a lot of circumstances, because it, it, it's limiting the risk. All right. Okay. Um, all of this, and it, I'm not going to go into this in loads of details, because again, we do a workshop called Cash Flow Essentials that looks at this. But one thing that you do need to look at is how much your startup costs are. Again, where that money is going to come from you need to know how much it's going to cost you to run your business. So in terms of the uncertainty of, around money coming in and money going out, you've got to do a cash flow forecast. Even if you decide you're not going to write a business plan, which I would say don't do that, try and write a business plan. Um, in a business plan there is a cash flow forecast and you must do it. Otherwise, you haven't got a clue whether your idea is something that's viable or not. So understand your startup costs, your other expenses, try not to forget anything. Speak to other people that have started similar businesses, say what were your startup costs? Don't be afraid to ask those kind of questions. Obviously the lower your costs, the much better chance you have of succeeding. The higher your costs, the more risky it is. All right. Um, with all your ideas, it's about you know trying to do things better. Um, again, I've worked with a lot of people who kind of put off starting something. They've got a great idea and they know how they're going to do it and they've written a business plan, but then they're always putting off starting. And it's because they're perfectionists. They want everything to be perfect from the from the word go. Which there's nothing wrong with that. And um, but what I would say, and I would say to all of you. I've said to many people in the past, your idea is not going to be perfect at the very start. Make it as good as possible, and again, do the research to, to kind of make sure you're offering something that is wanted. Um, but it's not going to be perfect. It will never be perfect. There is not one brand business out there 
but he's perfect. And um, they are always improving things. You know, a company, a global brand like Apple, to so many people, that is the perfect brand. Um, but why do they keep coming up with new things? Why do they keep improving things? Because they're not perfect. They always think of new things. The brand is so good at putting up all of the little things that might other things, other products are better. Yeah. From a whole yeah. branding height. Yeah. Uh, in a way. Yeah. Absolutely. But to them, they're always trying to do things better. And for you, running your own ideas, you should always be saying, okay, yeah, this is good, what I'm offering is good, but I know I can always improve it. I can always do things better. So you're always looking. Again, that's why you never stop doing the research, because you're always looking to improve. Yeah? Well, I was just going to say, some people would say that they're not very good at inno innovating at all, and they're the last to make now, which is five years ago, for the AirPods, which is good. But yeah. Tim Cook is very good at efficiency. Yeah. So that's where all their money comes from. Yeah. And that's why they're fighting so many lawsuits in the United States for their price, pricing practices. No, you're right. I mean, so many people don't like Apple products yeah. and don't think they're the best. But they're very good at efficiency. They yeah. make a lot of money from having their process. Yeah, they are. Done. But, you know, they, they, if you spoke to their CEO, you spoke to their head of operations and sort of development team, they will never say they're perfect. They will never say that their products are the best. They're, well, they probably will say their products are the best, but they will always say there is something better around the corner. And, and that's the way that you've got to think about your ideas. Your, your ideas are going to be as good as you can possibly put out there. But the main thing I'm trying to get across is there's never a perfect time to start. There's always going to be something that you can improve in your idea. And that will always be the case. So <coughs> you can have, you can keep developing your idea, you can keep researching it. At some point, you do have to start. And then, yeah, you can improve things as you go along. <coughs> and a lot of that come through customer feedback and comparing yourself against <coughs> competitors again learning from what doesn't work there will be things that go wrong there will be things that don't work so yeah get out there launch something experiment with it see what reactions are um, make sure you do spend time doing all of these choosing a business name, we've spoken about. If you are making products, and um, making food, research suppliers, we've spoken about getting price right, understanding what you offer. So again, coming back to you telling somebody who you've never met before what your idea is about, you've got to understand it, or else they are not going to understand it. Um, make sure you can be found. So again, you can spend five grand plus on a great website. That does not mean that it's going to get found. You've got to do lots more than that. You've got to make sure you are pushing it through social media, the right channels that are going to reach the right people. Um, you've got to make sure you're getting in the right publications to look at all the marketing avenues that are going to be open to you. Um, things are not going to get found on their own. Now, if you are a business that is business to business, so you're looking at other companies to buy from you, then again, just having a website, social media presence is not going to get you found. You have to go to them in that case. So um, where your pizza place is, where your vegan food is going to be, it's about making sure that it's in the right place. So. Um, grow your networks, outsourcing solicit again, getting people who are experts in certain areas where you don't have that expertise to help. Don't try and do everything on your own. Um, know your cash flow. Come along to the cash flow forecasting workshop. It'll help with all of that. Um, you mentioned this. Yeah, find sign 
to switch off. It is hard work to get anything off the ground. Um, you will find yourself working a lot of hours, putting a lot of effort in. It's great to do that, but you need to find time for yourself as well. Um, otherwise, you'll, you'll kind of just burn out. <coughs> okay, um, how many of you have done a squat analysis before? Yeah, so you kind of know what it's about. It's identifying strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. It's a good idea to do this on your idea, on yourself, on your competition. Um, generally in a business plan template, the one that I will send you later will have a SWOT analysis in it. So look at the strengths of you and your business, the weaknesses that you have, and look at these of competitors. So what are they good at? What are they not so good at? And that, in turn, will help you identify opportunities. Um, threats are always going to come from many different things. Um, so just identify, you know, threats are going to come from new competitors, um, existing competitors that have kind of got to speed, um, changes in trends. So what is on trend now might not be in a year's time. So again, you as a business having to adapt and innovate. So do a SWOT analysis. It, it will really help you look at things in a different way. Um, does anyone want to tell me what their USP is for their particular idea? I would say for my firm is uh, responsiveness, which the big four cannot offer because they have so many criteria in choosing who they serve, as in companies they audit or consult for. But the <laughs> I used to say upcoming artists, we that are just coming into the field uh, with a few clients to serve and the like just a phone call I could respond okay so that's good yeah so yeah if I had found you and I'm having a conversation with you and I'm looking at other your competitors to use their services as opposed to yours um, and I ask that question why should I use you now you can tell me because I'm smaller as a company I'm responsive yeah. I'm at the end of the phone, I'm at the end of an email. So that, yeah, that is a good reason why somebody would use you as opposed to a more established um, company. So, <coughs> anyone else want to sort of describe their unique selling point? I have a water graphic. I'm in the water graphic in the factory. I have to do good text animation. Right. So you should text animation tools, they don't, uh, they, they actually depend on one font, right, there is, uh, there is no option to change the font, none that I know of. So yeah. My tool uh, is totally dependent. Okay, well, that's good. So, yeah, I mean, just think of, again, answering that question, why should I buy from you? Um, and it is comparing yourself to other people in your sector and just having a couple of reasons. It could simply be I pride myself on customer service. You know, that is a reason why somebody should buy from someone. Um, so at my, the energy company that I um, get my energy from, both gas and electric at home, is a company that I've been with for about 12 years now. And the reason I'm with them, I haven't got a clue whether they're cheaper than other brands that are out there, but their customer service is absolutely second to none. If you've got a problem, you contact them and they, they are there at the end of the phone. You're not waiting for 20 minutes or 30 minutes like you are with most sort of big companies. Um, and they are a big company, but their, their customer service is absolutely superb. And so many times I've had these sales calls saying, oh yeah, we can get you cheaper energy. Yeah, I'm not interested because thing that's important to me on that is customer service. So unique selling point could be good customer service. It could be this is a Sheffield company that do their deliveries without using um, a 
car or van that, that would have emissions. So again, that could be important to people. So just think about what you can do that just sets you aside from others. Um, but it is important to have a couple of reasons because you are always going to get asked that question. Okay. Uh, your attitude uh, when you're working for yourself is important. Um, more important than you if you're employed. So, you know, when, if you're employed, you can have a bit of a stinker of an attitude and you'll keep your job, you'll kind of keep earning the money that you are. If your attitude stinks and you're working for yourself, you're going to lose customers. Um, if you've got employees, clients, suppliers, networks, and you're not very nice to them, again, quite quickly you get known in your industry as someone who's not someone to deal with. So having a, a really positive attitude, be nice to people, is a lot more important working for yourself than it is if you're employed. So just make sure your attitude is good and um, just be nice. <coughs> um, okay, we've got loads coming up. We've got loads coming up in March. I will get you to quite a few leaflets here. Can I just get you to take just other things that you need to look at? So we, we did briefly mention legal requirements and we said one of those would be registering with HMRC as a sole trader. Um, it could be as a limited company, but don't do that without getting advice. Um, so other things that you would need to do, other than registering as a business, most of you will need insurance of some kind. Uh, that is such as public liability insurance. If you are working in an environment where you're face to face with people, it's not a legal requirement to have it, but it would be recommended because it means that if ever anyone had an accident and they tried to blame it on you and your business, um, you're covered. If you're given advice on things, so such as your business, you'd need indemnity insurance. Again, it's not a legal requirement, but it would be highly recommended. It doesn't cost a lot. Um, having a bank account, you can use I would always recommend having a separate bank account when you first start working for yourself. It doesn't have to be a business bank account if you are a sole trader. Um, but just keep it separate from your personal stuff, then it helps you. Getting a business bank account is sensible as well. Um, people are put off because they're on charges. And those charges you can always offset against you, any tax that you owe. And most banks will offer you free banking for a period of time, 12 to 24 months. So it's always worth speaking to your bank, who you bank with, to see what business banking they can offer you, but speak to some others. Um, some of you will need licenses. So food businesses will need to register with environmental health. Um, there's no cost to that, but it is a legal requirement. If you were selling alcohol, you would need an alcohol license. Um, for some of you, you might need other licenses depending on what you're doing. Um, if you need to protect something, you need intellectual property support. So again, we said about the BIPC. Terms and conditions, T's and C's. Um, most of you will need some terms and conditions. This is your rules between you and your customers, or you and your suppliers. So you will create an agreement that anything that you kind of, anyone that you do business with, you state what your rules are. So it could be, if we use the example of graphic design. So if you've done a piece of work as a graphic designer for a company, you will send terms and conditions which state what you've done, how much you've charged, what any additional work will cost that company, when you will pay in, how you will pay in. So it's as simple as that, it's listing those things. But if you don't create those terms and conditions, that company that you've done work for will take the mickey. They will, they will kind of 
he'll say, right, okay, yeah, we did agree this verbally, but I want you to do this as well. And I'll pay you whenever. So if you don't state important things like when you want pay and how you want pay, you'll find that companies will um, push it. Um, the other things that think about, we've mentioned this, get domain name, get social media handles. Even if you're at the very early idea stage at the moment, you've thought of a name, make sure you get those before someone else reaches it. Um, there's loads of other support, like I said. So we said about the BIPC, have, have a look at their website. We've mentioned startup loans, which is government um, lending organization. We have in Sheffield, for those of you setting up in Sheffield, an organization called Business Sheffield. They are free to use. They offer similar support to us, but I would recommend you get it as well as us. So they will offer one-to-one -one support. They offer growth support for those of you that want to grow. They offer specialist support in tech areas and things like that. They offer workshops. Similar to what we do, but again, go to them. You'll learn different things from us and them. Um, online, there's such as Enterprise Nation, which has loads of really good information. So have a look at this kind of information um, and the other supports out there. Okay, um, this is kind of the last slide. So just a summary of what I think you need to do next. Is there anything that I've gone through? that didn't make sense, so you've got any other questions on it? Have you got any other questions on anything? Is it, uh, is it uh, sales sales? No, it's not. But again, depending on what you're doing, and depending on how you feel about selling, then yes, it can be really beneficial. When you work for yourself, you have to become salespeople. Because you are, generally you're gonna be the only person in that business at the start. It's very, very rare people are employing people from the work go. Um, so you have to sell your products, your services. Now, that's not as daunting as you might think. It's just about you kind of making sure that you're putting yourself in front of the right people and you're confident in what you're selling, you believe in your products and services. And if you can do that, you can sell. And um, selling is not about sort of being some kind of um, double glazing salesperson or something like that. It's, it's, it's just about you making sure that you believe in those products and services that you have. And you should all be able to do that because you all kind of have these ideas that you're passionate about. Um, but for some of you, yes, you are going to have to sell in, in different environments such as, you know, to another business. And that is a little bit more tricky. You know, selling your pizzas, selling your um, vegan food to the general public is, is generally just about offering good customer service and good food. But offering, you know, your products if it is to other businesses, that's when it becomes a little bit harder because you have to kind of you have to pitch it. So um so rather than relay relay solely on, on the marketing side of it. The marketing is going to be important, yeah. but you also if you feel you couldn't sell to those other businesses then you might want to get some help from somebody who has got those things. Yeah. It will be more about you going to your target audience rather than them coming to you. So they're, they're not just going to come to you. And putting an advert in a magazine on social media is not going to work, I get that. Um, so yes, it's going to be a case of you've got to go to them and it's about collating a list, in your case, of the businesses that you could add value to. And then it is going to be contacting them Picking up the phone. One on one. Yeah, one by one. Cold call. Cold calling, yeah. So there's no way around that, I'm afraid. It, it, 
for a business business to business, that's the way you've got to do it. Now, a lot of your ideas, you won't have to do that, so don't worry. But such is your idea, yes, you would have to do that. So it's a different type of selling. And that's why, yes, if you feel that's not something I could do, then you might employ somebody to, to kind of help you with that. All right, anything else that anyone's got any questions about? That's a summary of kind of what we've been through, um, things that are really important. Um, we do have other sessions, like I say, we've got other events coming up, so please come along to those, um, come along to other sessions. Um, there's a couple of workshops coming up this week. Um, and then there are lots coming up in March. Okay. Thank you very much. Hopefully that's been helpful. Um,